Wow, pretty humbling. Uh, my girls are shocked that their dad had hair back in the day. <laughs> and I think we should make a crusade to bring back the short shorts. I think that was a good look for everybody back there in the late 80s. Uh, I'd like to extend my thanks to the committee. Uh, I'm very humbled and honored uh, to be up here amongst some great athletes, but more importantly, uh, some great people. Uh, I tried to lead by example. Um, I think when you look at an evening like tonight, you, you really appreciate the, the folks that do so much behind the scenes. And Mike Treston, I just want to extend my thanks to you for the communication and the hard work behind it. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, when the word got out that I was being inducted, uh, I'll be honest with you, I, was, uh, I struggle with this side of things. Uh, I strive for success, but I, I tend to kind of take a back seat with the notoriety. Uh, I got a ton of emails and text messages con congratulating me. But I got one special one from a gentleman from the class of 1985, and I'm not sure if he's here tonight. His name is Phil DeAngelis, and his subtitle read, Outrage. <laughs> And Phil apparently feels that my nomination and induction will diminish his Hall of Fame induction himself. So I'm not sure if Father Flynn is here this evening, but I think Phil may need a refresher on that whole caritas, unitas, and veritas that we, we tend to preach here at Malvern. All right? Um, my career at Malvern uh, did not get off to a resounding Start. It was almost like playing a basketball game and being down 20 nothing at the end of the first quarter and not having any timeouts left. Uh, my first test, I earned a 28. <laughs> um, it was a class with Mr. Tom McGuire. And if anyone knows Mr. McGuire, he is the authority in everything and anything to do with history. I remember getting the test back on a Friday afternoon and there was more red ink on that test than the black ink that I wrote down. <laughs> and I figured, I was trying to figure out how I could tell my parents that it was a 28 out of 30, but I don't think they would buy it. Uh, as I was waiting for my mom to come pick me up, I was approached by a gentleman at the bus stop, a teacher who had bus duty, and he made a comment, hey, do you think you're worth it here? Do you think you're worth being here at Malvern Prep? And I looked at this gentleman, and I said, sir, you don't understand. I have a 28 out of 100 in my backpack. Can you please refrain from the bad jokes? <laughs> that, that person is later identified as Mr. John DeAngelis. <laughs> but when you talk Hall of Fame, I, I think it's an honor to be mentioned with such great people. But, but I think it's also a great opportunity to, to publicly thank those folks behind the scenes that have done so much for me so much to, to put me in position to succeed. So much, so many people here at Malvern that give back day in and day out. Back in 1984 through 2015, 2016. That's what makes Malvern special. But my first team is my family. And there's the lady who had a vision who valued education, who was a tireless worker, selfless to today, that had a vision that, you know what, Malvern's the spot for you. And although I struggled with it initially, looking back on it, it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. And for that, I'm, I'm eternally grateful, Mom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, to my father, it didn't take a genius to know that I had someone very, very special in my corner. A member of the first NBA championship team, and a, a member of the Temple University Hall of Fame and countless others. But my dad has a unique way of teaching, mentoring, making things appear to be a lot easier than what they are. Knowing that you will be hit with adversity, but it's more importantly how you react to that. My dad has a couple quick sayings that forever stay in the back of my mind. Stay hungry. 
Work hard with a purpose. Stay loose and have fun. Oh, and I almost forgot. Don't be a strapper. Do not be a strapper, all right? I say to my dad all the time, you have an MBA ring, you've achieved so much. I go, how does that make you feel? And in his humble way, he says, yeah, 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 you know what, that and $1.50 gets me a cup of coffee. <laughs> to my brother, although he's a graduate of Penn Charter, I spoke to Father Flynn a little bit earlier and we got a special dispensation for him to be on campus until midnight this evening. <laughs> The best compliment I can pay my brother is that he was my fiercest competitor. He made me who I am on the athletic fields. We went at it consistently day in and day out, but he was my most loyal ally. And to have someone like that in my corner day in and day out, it's pretty special. It's very special. And to them, I thank you very much. To my teammates, if you saw all in the film, we had some talented players here, some very, very good basketball and baseball players. But more importantly, these guys were just great, great people. Just to mention a few who I learned a lot from, similar to what Frank and to what Kevin mentioned earlier, by just observing. Some of them, Terry Redican. Mark Lindsay, I need to mention Mark Lindsay because Mark Lindsay is a college official right now and sometimes he has my games. <laughs> and I'm so happy right now that unlike Gary Duda and Tim Kearns, I was the guy that passed Mark the ball a little bit. So at least I see that coming back and, and Mark being a beneficiary of some favorable calls in the next couple months, Mark, all right? Uh, as Ford mentioned, Gary Duda, who's also in the Hall of Fame. I sure wish Gary would have passed the ball a little bit more, but the next assist and the next rebound Gary grabs is going to be his first. Uh, to Tim Kearns, Tim Kearns was a, a great player, but Tim was one of those players that not only knew his own statistics throughout the game, but he knew what everyone else's statistics were throughout the game. So I thought that was a pretty uh, interesting trait to, to have. Uh, to my classmates, I think my junior year we were a lot better than my senior year. Uh, we, had, we, we struggled my senior year. And it could have been a season where a lot of people were pointing fingers and uh, passing blame, but we stuck together. Uh, Ed Deal, Mike Howard, Bill DiNicola, Steve Maffa, uh, Mike Nash, Ivan Wilkins, just great people, great teammates. Now, to the people that I would really like to thank, the faculty and the coaches, Frank Ryan, Steve Valio. I don't know if Mr. Valio is here, but I think I went my whole career at Malvern Prep without a detention. <laughs> and that was getting back to that whole mon mindset that my dad mentioned about not being a strapper. <laughs> I had respect for Mr. Valio and Mr. Ryan day in and day out, and I didn't want to cross paths with them any more than I had to. So, so for them, I, I appreciate it. The aforementioned Tom McGuire, and I'll just finish that story real quick. When I got assigned the head coaching position, I saw Mr. McGuire getting ready that summer, and I had to go out of my way, and I said, Mr. McGuire. He's like, yeah, Jimmy. I said, you know, the 28 out of 100 back in eighth grade. I said, uh, I mean, 28, what's the difference between 28 and 48? You can be a little more generous. And with this evil laugh, he goes, <laughs> Jimmy, I was being generous. <laughs> Some things are better left that you don't know, I guess, huh? Uh, to Kevin McCary, Florence Cruz, Chuck Shinichi, people that are at every event that, that go on and go on and go on, and it's, it's greatly appreciated. To the legend himself, Fran Kenny. And if I mention Fran, I need to mention the best fan of my whole career, his lovely wife, Mary. It wasn't uncommon for me to have a game down at Drexel, four years, five years, out of Malvern and get a message on my voicemail. At that time, it was an answering machine. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jimmy, great win last night. 
but make sure you do your best to get to church this week. No, no excuses. Uh, to Coach Tossi, obviously, great coach. Not only do you learn a lot about X's and O's, but Coach Tossi fostered a family atmosphere that it wasn't always about the wins and the losses. It was about how you conducted yourself day in and day out, take pride in the classroom, carry yourself as a first class individual. And not only does he become your coach, but 25, 30 years removed, he's a very special friend. And I think that's the epitome of what a coach is all about. And that's what I cherish most about Coach Tossi. Unfortunately, Coach Tossi is now an assistant coach at Rosemont. Rosemont is in our league whose head coach is Bobby Hughes, who's also a Malvern grad. So there's two games right there that I dread playing every year. It's just bittersweet. Bittersweet that you know you're competing against someone that you know is going to bring their A game. And unfortunately, someone's going to have to lose that game. To Coach Ostick, just a salt of the earth guy, had this innate ability just to make you feel special every day. To Coach DeAngelis, I learned a long time ago that if you don't have anything nice to say, you just move on. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> After my playing days at Malvern, I always knew I wanted to get into coaching based on those individuals. All right? When the opportunity came to coach, after I think the eighth interview with Mr. Stewart and the committee, I finally got offered the position. I would like to thank Mr. Stewart, Father Flynn, Kurt Ruck for such a great opportunity. Not only wanting to coach, but coaching in a place that you truly, truly, truly love. Seven years that were so rewarding. Not only to get to kind of reconnect with some of those aforementioned teachers, but to develop and cultivate relationships and friendships with a whole new group of friars. Families like McNulty, Higgins, Perpiglia, Pitt, Gordon, Rafferty, Nassip, Kilpatrick, Hoban, Francisco, Ammerman, Parsons, Flanagan, Creighton, Ramagano, just to name a few. The mission when I took over as a coach was quite simple, play hard, and just have fun, boys. We were fortunate to win a lot of games. I'm proud of that success. But I think we provided our players and managers with experiences that, that they can draw upon for years. And to be proud that they were part of the Malvern Prep basketball program. I must come clean as well. Because I would often say to our guys, you're not the most talented group, you're not the most athletic, you better be able to do the little things if you want to win this game. The reality was, we had some really good, talented, hardworking players, okay, that competed at a very high level. More importantly, they were genuinely fun to be around. Sometimes I talked to our assistant coaches and I was often jealous of football and baseball and lacrosse because we have five spots. And I know that the 15 individuals on our squad work tirelessly hard day in and day out, but there's only so many minutes in the game. And for those guys to accept their role selflessly is, 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 is quite an indictment on, on, on who they are. It's pretty special. You don't get that too often nowadays. So to those players, I say thanks. You guys created it. You guys took a program that was pretty successful and you elevated it to a whole new level. I had nothing to do with it. You're the one that made the baskets. You guys are the ones that grabbed the rebounds. I certainly wasn't the one who committed the lazy fouls or had the stupid turnovers. <laughs> you guys should be very proud. It's greatly appreciated. When you take over as a coach, a lot of the challenges came. Well, Jimmy, how are you going to take over the program? You're not a teacher. You're not on campus day in and day out. Well, in order for that to work, in order for that success to take place, 
I had to rely on a lot of folks. Folks like Bill Gibson in admissions, Bill Mills in the training room, film guy extraordinaire Bob Calameco, special assistant to the stars Leo Kinden who would keep track of guys academically and give, give me tabs. So we had a system in place that seemed to work. And to my assistant coaches, I think if I was working nowadays, I, I'd kind of be, uh, there'd be an issue with HR because all of my assistant coaches were Malvern Prep alums. Guys like Jake Ferry, Mark Tarswell, Dave Dilworth, Ryan Dickey, and the man that bleeds Malvern Blue, Joe Redican. To those guys, I'm eternally grateful for all your help and sacrifices. Uh, the guys that were with me for all seven years, Joe Rogers, I'm not sure if Joe's here, man of few words, but a guy who knows the game tremendously well and who is loyal as the day is long. For that, Joe, I appreciate your efforts. To Rick Calvin, when I took the job, he was my first call. He was on the previous staff, and although I didn't know Rick all that well, I knew of him. <laughs> And let's just say Rick and I have a very dysfunctional relationship. <laughs> we tend to argue, we tend to golf, we talk hoops, we argue, we laugh, we fight with each other, we argue some more, but in a very strange way it all seems to work out. He's become a very, very good friend of mine. And at the time when I took over and Rick took over, we both had young families. And for him to give up his time and sacrifice it means an awful lot. And I, I kind of busted his chops earlier, but John DeAngelis. John DeAngelis went from Mr. DeAngelis at the bus stop to Coach DeAngelis to Bunk, a friend that epitomizes, I think, what Malvern's all about. Just being there in times of adversity always there to kind of give you a different perspective on things. Truly, truly appreciate it and responsible for my development and my growth. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, when you coach, and I'll finish up with this, there's certain things that guys tell me, hey, do you remember games where you scored 25 points, 35? I don't remember those things. I don't remember when our players score those, but I remember the kind of intricacies within the game. I remember a player like Brendan McNulty who dove on, on the floor for more loose balls than humanly possible. I remember Ryan Ammerman taking a charge at the end of a GA game that was a pivotal play to win a game. I remember Sean Gordon being in a locker room with a busted up eye, begging to go back in because that's what kind of effort he exposed. I remember Ryan Creighton, I don't know if he's here, point guard. I used to call him a power point guard because he was a bit of a meathead as epitomized by the fact that he was playing dodgeball his senior year and he broke his hand in the dodgeball tournament. <laughs> Pretty sweet going into Christmas break knowing your point guard broke his hand playing dodgeball. <laughs> I remember winning the championship at Episcopal Academy and looking up in the stands and the student sections took over, Malvern Prep, strong attendance, and looking up and seeing a, a banner saying Gus. We had a player, Gus Carlin, played about two minutes all year but he had that relationship with the student body. When you look up, you look at that and you say, hey, you know what, that's pretty cool. That's pretty special. After a tough loss, everyone's gonna say, hey, coach is upset, coach is upset. We're gonna have a rough practice. Come in and play wiffle ball and just have the guys kind of break down and have some fun. Guys like Mike Higgins, young man, who's currently at Notre Dame as a manager, make no mistakes about it, as a freshman he came in and he was running our program. I would come into practice and he'd have the ball set up, the clock set up, and he's like, coach, this is what we're gonna do, everything's cool. That lasted for three years, so Michael, I appreciate all your efforts. It goes, uh, it goes on and, and it's greatly appreciated. Um, I started by thanking my family. I'm gonna conclude by thanking my family. In order for this to work, as Kevin mentioned earlier, there's a lot of sacrifices behind the scene with, within starting a family. And I have one of the most special people in my corner. I call her my head coach. Maureen, 
your unconditional love, the fact that when I took the job, we had two young girls and taking trips 45 minutes one way, coming to games and holding down the fort is greatly appreciated. I thank you for that. I'm so happy that we're on our journey together. And to my two beautiful daughters, Megan and Molly, I think they've been in more gymnasiums in the Philadelphia area than a lot of high school coaches. <laughs> That's part of our deal. And, and I'm so happy that, that they're with me. It's been a blast. Again, I'm humbled to be up here. I'm sorry I may have taken a little bit too long, but as a coach and as a player, there are a ton of people I had to thank. I appreciate the opportunity. Go Friars.